and thank you for listening to today's episode of JAT Cast, the official podcast of the Journal of Athletic Training. My name is Shelby Baez, and I will be taking over hosting duties from Luke Donovan to summarize two articles from the special issue celebrating women scholars in athletic training. This month, we will discuss two articles from the special issue in the Journal of Athletic Training over two short episodes. In the first episode, I will explore the findings of a study that examined biomechanical responses to external biofeedback in individuals with chronic ankle instability. In the second episode, I will explore the findings of a study that examined health-related quality of life in former Division I collegiate athletes compared to non-collegiate athletes. As a reminder, the article discussed today can be found on the JAT website, natajournals.org. And please remember that all content from JAT is open access to all readers thanks to funding from the National Athletic Trainers Association. The title of the first article is Biomechanical Response to External Biofeedback During Functional Task in Individuals with Chronic Ankle Instability, authored by Danielle Torp and colleagues from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Let's survey the scene. Lateral ankle sprain is one of the most common musculoskeletal injuries with a large population of patients eventually developing chronic ankle instability, also known as CAI. This patient population often demonstrates many functional and mechanical impairments, including altered biomechanics during functional activities. More specifically, patients with chronic ankle instability experience greater lateral plantar pressure and a laterally displaced center of pressure, or COP, during balance activities. This is concerning as greater lateral plantar pressure and lateral COP can place the individual closer to the mechanism of ankle injury and increase stress on the medial talar cartilage. Therefore, if there is increased importance on restoring proper ankle biomechanics to maintain long-term joint health in patients with CAI. Previous research has examined the efficacy of rehabilitation programs to target these impairments and improve functional outcomes in this population. However, many patients continue to report deficits in self-reported function after the intervention. It is hypothesized that not all deficits, such as lateral COP, were improved with these programs and that feedback during functional exercises may help to improve current rehabilitation programs. Two novel biofeedback instruments, one visual and one auditory, have successfully shifted COP medially during a single session of treatment walking. More specifically, these devices provide external feedback where an external source is used to direct the attention of the individual's movement to the context of the environment that is provided by the external source. However, prior to integration into traditional rehabilitation, it is important to explore the real-time response of these interventions in patients with CAI. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to determine the real-time effects of auditory and visual biofeedback on biomechanics during common exercises compared with the effects of a baseline condition with no feedback. The authors recruited 19 physically active adults who met the standards for CAI as determined by the International Ankle Consortium. Physical activity levels were determined using the International Physical Activity Questionnaire short form, where participants stated that they engaged in greater than or equal to 30 minutes of physical activity three times per week. All participants completed a single limb static balance using an AccuSway optimized force platform. Plantar pressure was collected via the PEDRX system. Under a baseline no biofeedback condition, a visual biofeedback condition, and an auditory biofeedback condition, each participant completed a single limb balance, step down, lateral hop, and forward lunge. Visual biofeedback was provided by a cross-line laser device secured to the dorsum of the foot using a strap. Before each task was conducted, the laser was adjusted to a neutral stance, in starting positions, and a piece of athletic tape served as a reference for the starting point of each task. Participants were instructed to perform the task as naturally as possible while keeping the vertical line on the laser in line with the tape and limit the amount of rotation of the cross line. Participants completed three practice trials followed by 10 trials for analysis. The auditory bowel feedback was provided by a FlexiForce load sensor and was calibrated for each participant before each task. 
Laboratory shoes were cut to allow the sensor to be taped to the insole of the shoe underneath the fifth metatarsal while maintaining the integrity of the shoe. Participants were instructed to shift all of their weight onto the sensor, leaning in an anterior lateral direction, and were instructed to perform the task as naturally as possible without making the buzzer elicit a noise. Participants performed three practice trials and 10 trials for analysis. Here are the results. The author's central hypothesis that both visual and auditory bowel feedback would produce changes in static balance and bowel mechanics during functional tasks was partially supported. During the eyes open and eyes closed static balance, the auditory bowel feedback condition produced a beneficial shift in COP location for more medially focused location. The visual bowel feedback produced a similar medial shift during the eyes open trial, but was not significant for eyes closed trial when compared to baseline. As for the functional task, the auditory bowel feedback increased the lateral heel peak pressure and pressure time integral and reduced the pressure time integral on the lateral forefoot when compared to baseline during the step down and decreased the pressure time integral on the lateral forefoot during the forward lunge. The visual biofeedback led to increased peak pressure and pressure time integral on the lateral heel region and in the lateral midfoot region during the lateral hop task. No other significant findings were observed. The primary findings were that both modes of external biofeedback contributed to changes in static balance, but individually targeted functional activities. Furthermore, the auditory biofeedback condition caused parallel changes during the eyes open and eyes closed balance, which indicates a potential improvement in balance without relying on visual stimulus. While this study provided initial evidence to explore the efficacy of external focus of attention bowel feedback, the authors completed a real-time single-dose effect and are not able to draw conclusions about long-term ability of the visual and auditory bowel feedback devices to improve bowel mechanics. Additionally, a neuromuscular perspective was not examined in this study. Therefore, future research should characterize the full range of biomechanical changes that occur while using these novice bowel feedback devices. Well, that's it for today's JAT cast. Please remember to rate and subscribe to the podcast, which is available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Stitcher. You can find out more information about upcoming podcasts and other JAT events on our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts at JAT underscore NATA. Thank you for listening and keep a lookout for our next JAT cast episode. <music>